right, it's PFTPM on Peacock. It's the joint Chris Sims on Button PFTPM weekly Megapix podcast collaboration. And this is where I hand the microphone over to Christopher because he technically won last week. And so we have a deal that whoever wins gets to lead the way for the following week. So go ahead, do your victory lap, and then take over the show. Well, I'm not going to do that. I'm not. I'm, it's still early in the season. I'm going to stay focused, okay? But... Either way, we both did very well last week. There's no doubt. I got the two-game advantage in the straight-up picks last week. Against the spread, you beat me by one. Both two and one, best bets. You can see for the year, we're doing very well across the board. I mean, I'm killing it straight up. You're killing it with best bets. You look 20 years younger in that picture. It's a win-win all the way around. I like it, okay? You look good. And it's so cute of you, little Mikey Florio. To wear a matching shirt with me today on the pod. You didn't have this on for the show. So nice of you. Now we could be twinsies in our navy blue. <laughs> I didn't realize you had blue on. I thought it was black. I just <laughs> I didn't want to wear a dress shirt for the podcast. It's more relaxed. So this was the closest and the cleanest. That is the standard that I go by during football season. Whatever's closest, whatever's cleanest. All right. That's good. I'll, I'll take that. I want clean too, even though I can't smell you from where you are in West Virginia. But we got one fewer game this week. As we know, Steelers... Uh, Steelers and the Titans has been postponed. We just made a video about it. Anybody can go on Pro Football Talk or Peacock and check it out there. We discussed that, but so that'll be out of the running. So let's get this started. You ready, ready tonight? I mean, want to let this know. All odds provided by PointsBet, the new official sports betting partner of NBC Sports. Yes, we are big time and we are in the sports betting business. All right? So that's pretty good. And I felt good about picking my games this week. I had a hard time finding three best bets that I really loved. I found two. The last one, not sure about. So we'll see where we go. But let's start out with Thursday night. Oh, we got a doozy on Thursday night. Hope you can stay awake in your barn through this one, all right? We got Denver at the New York Jets. Mike, I'll let you lead this off. The Jets favored by one, over under at 41. Um, 41, I don't know. Do you think they can even get to that number, both teams combined? I don't know, 21 they may not be able Seriously. to get to. But isn't this the kind of game where we expect nothing. Just three days after, we expected everything from the Chiefs and the Ravens and really got disappointed. I, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a close game, an exciting game. And at one point this week, the Broncos were actually favored. Then they decided to go with Brett Rippon at quarterback, and the line swung the other way in the favor of the Jets. Look, regardless of whether or not Adam Gase's job is on the line, it's time for the Jets to show up and play hard and not embarrass themselves. And if they lose this game, they may be looking at 0-16 when you consider their full schedule. So if the Jets are ever going to win this year, if there's ever a time to believe in the Jets, it's tonight against the Broncos. Giving one, I think they win by more than that. I'm going to go Jets 20, Broncos 10. The Broncos just have too many injuries to deal with a short week, and I think the Jets are going to be too driven to get that win because – who knows what happens if they lose at home to Denver, especially if they get embarrassed like they have the last two weeks. Yeah, I, Mike, I think my logic's are pretty much the same there. I don't know if I can look at this matchup in any which way and just go, oh, this team has a schematical advantage here, there, whatever. The Broncos, when healthy, are the better football team. There's no doubt. But they're killed right now. And there isn't that desperation because they know, oh, we might get Cortland Sutton back. Drew Locke will be back. You know, there's other guys on their defensive line they are going to be backed. Even A.J. Bouye, I believe he's got a chance to come back in the secondary. So they can look at their team and go, all right, when we get back healthy, we're going to still be a pain in the butt. We're going through a tough stretch here. The Jets, I have the same logic as you. They're going to look at the schedule, one after playing like crap the last two weeks, Gase's butt's on the line, and they're going to go, wow, this might be the only team we can beat for a while. We better take advantage of this right now. And then with them going with Brett Rippon, as, as far as the Broncos are concerned, yeah, I just can't take them in this week. Short week, first start ever. Greg Williams, who's always going to throw a few curveballs at you. So I go Jets in an ugly one. I'm going 16-10 to 10 instead of your 20-10. to 10, And that's all we need to say about that game, right? We good there? Good. I think we're good there. Right. Hopefully, it'll be hopefully it'll be something watchable tonight. I just want to just as long as it stays in competitive area of those scores right there. I'm cool. I'll, I'll take that in this game. I'll take any. I just want it to be close in a game. That's all I'm asking for. All right, one o'clock. Here we go. Ravens versus the football team. The Ravens versus the football team. We know where Baltimore is right now. Washington, great defense, offense, big question mark. Ravens favored by 13, Mike, and I'm going to lead this off if you don't mind. 
Um, I look at it as I think this can be a defensive struggle early on because this Washington defense is real. Uh, we've discussed it. The front four is very good. Their defense puts them in and gives them opportunities every game to kind of hang in there and maybe win the football game. But the offense usually screws it up. And in a week like this, Baltimore being pissed, Lamar Jackson being questioned, the Ravens' defense got tore up and pushed around. You don't ever see that happen. I can think. I think Washington can kind of keep this close because of their defense and maybe make it ugly early. But I have no faith in the Washington offense consistently through the game. I think this is a game the Ravens probably score a touchdown on defense, if not get a short field a few times. And slowly but surely, I think they'll just wear down that Washington defense by being on the field too much throughout the game. So I am going Ravens, of course, as you could tell, 24-9 to in this one. An ugly 24-9 to victory. Two key factors here for me. Number one, can the Ravens rebound from the deflating loss that they sustained on Monday night? A loss that kind of punctured that bubble of confidence slash arrogance that they were going to be not just as good as they were last year, but even better. This was their chance to show that they're on par with the Kansas City Chiefs. Instead, Chiefs are their kryptonite, and now they're trying to put the pieces back together. Can they do it quickly? Can they pivot to a spot where they're playing a team they should beat? The other factor is this. Will Alex Smith be active for the game? He wasn't active last week or any of the prior weeks. The first game Alex Smith is active, to me, is the first game that Dwayne Haskins good is point, on the Mike. hot seat. Yeah. And, and, and so, given the possibility that things go sideways for Washington early and Alex Smith gets put in, that's the one thing that has me a little nervous about whether or not the Ravens can turn this into a route. But then again, we don't know what Alex Smith is going to do two yeah. years after he last played. But then again, Alden Smith didn't play for five years, and look what he's doing. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic the Ravens win, and they win easily. I've got 30-13. to 13, But can they win the battle with themselves? And will Alex Smith at some point be brought in and potentially keep this thing closer than the 13-point spread. Yeah, uh, I, I, that's a good question. I mean, the point you bring up about Alex Smith and the, the first game he's dressing or something like that, you're right. That's something to watch out for. And the way Haskins has played, as we're hearing, and he was a big reason why they lost, if not the reason why they lost to the Browns last week. Uh, I think that's why we heard Rivera kind of correct himself a little bit on Monday going, eh, no, there is a leash. There is a time when we might have to pull him out. He's not safe forever. He can't be with the way he's played so far. All right, let's get down to it. Here we go. We got Seahawks, Dolphins. Dolphins coming off a little bit of a long week, right, because they played on last Thursday. Seattle coming off another shootout. Shocker. They're favored by six and a half on the road across the country. Vacation time in Miami. Weather's going to be good, everything like that. Dude, that doesn't apply I in know. a pandemic. I'm joking. And every time, let, let me say, every <laughs> time I've ever followed – the Chris Sims logic is vacation time in Miami, and I picked the, the home team. I've lost. Good, good. So the hell with that. Vacation time. All right. So does does Seattle fall in the trap this week of looking at the schedule no. and going, no. All right, go ahead. You lead no. it off. Yeah, I, I think the Seahawks win this game. They're given six and a half points. And here's the problem. If Ryan Fitzpatrick plays out of his mind like he did last Thursday night, this is a game that the Dolphins can keep close. But – that, that Fitzpatrick, Fitzmagic, Fitztragic toggle switch. You never know when it's going to flip back the other way. Seahawks probably a little salty about all the criticism they're taking regarding their defensive performance. Now, Jamal Adams didn't practice on Wednesday with that groin injury. He's day-to-day. -day. If he's not on the field, it becomes harder to slow down right. the Dolphins. But I just don't think they can match the Seahawks. I could see a high-scoring game. But I just think that the Dolphins' offense isn't good enough to exploit the Seattle defense, whereas the Seattle offense is going to roll up its points against anyone and everyone. Russ keeps cooking. Seahawks keep winning 31-20 to over Miami. Yeah, I, I see it similar, too. Uh, again, I, I do think – you know, I do think the Dolphins will move the ball in Seattle. Like you said, if Jamal Adams is not out there, that is, that'll be a huge blow to this team. It certainly is. There's not a lot of big-time difference makers on the Seattle football team, let alone you know, their cover corners stink. They just, they're not good. There's no other way to say it. They do not have special cover corners. I think Fitzpatrick, the way they play, they're pretty aggressive. I do think they'll move, yard, you know, move the ball, have yards, get some points, definitely. But I come to the same logic you do. 
that this is a Miami football team that's getting better, certainly. I mean, we're seeing they're, they're definitely a much better team than they were at the start of last year to compare to right now. But no Byron Jones, I think that could have made things interesting because maybe they could have matched up and slowed them down just a little. But ultimately, I think if the Seahawks win a shootout type of game, and win 38-28, where it's kind of close in a shootout all day. But then I, I really think what's going to happen is what you're saying. Fitzpatrick, it'll be 28-21. They're exchanging blows, and Fitzpatrick will throw an interception, and that'll make it 35-21. And then I'm like, you know, guessing on a field goal and a late Miami touchdown. But I certainly see the Seahawks winning this one. Okay, you good for there? Next game? Let's go. Let's go. Kyler Murray, Arizona Cardinals, losing, losing last week to the Detroit Lions, going to Carolina, who came off the win against the Chargers. Arizona favored by three points over under 51. It's an interesting game, Mike. Go ahead. You, you want to start it off again? Yeah, I'll start it off. Look, yeah. I, I, I felt great about Arizona until they lost a game I thought they should have won, and kudos to you. You picked the Lions upset last week, and the Panthers, we both got that one wrong. My God, they went into L.A., and they beat the Chargers – uh, which was a stunner. Yeah. So uh, I, the Panthers in this rebuild, see, this is how you rebuild. This is why Adam Gase is the subject of rumors and reports and speculation that he could be out because you still have to be able to live in the house while you're rebuilding it. And look at what the Panthers have done. They haven't embarrassed themselves in a single game this year, even as they're in a full-blown rebuild. They didn't have Christian McCaffrey. They don't have Christian McCaffrey tonight. He's out for a few more weeks with a high ankle sprain. But – Man, I, I'll tell you, I, I, I'm, I'm going to go with the Cardinals on this one because I, I don't think they're going to step into that trap two weeks in a row. It's not going to be easy. The Panthers are going to have their full focus. The Panthers are going to make it competitive. I've got 30-23. to 23. I like the Cardinals by a touchdown, but I do like what the Panthers are doing. They're moving the ball without McCaffrey. Teddy Bridgewater looks good, but, but I just don't think teams are generally going to have an answer for Kyler Murray, and I think he's going to iron out you know, the mistakes he made last week. I mean, for them to have all those turnovers, he had three yeah, interceptions. Right. And to still be in a position to win the game, right. that tells you how good they are. I, that's exactly it, Mike. That's what jumped out to me. Even though they lost last week, I watched that film, you know, being Ron Jaworski and all that, and I came away going, I kind of liked what I saw from Arizona still. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, Kyler Murray, he was a little loose with the ball last week. And Matt Patricia, because of his Bill Belichick background, can do things to scrambling quarterbacks that other coaches just can't coach up. So I, I'm back with you on that thought totally that, you know, one, Carolina's defense isn't ready for this and, and what he brings to the table and the way they spread the field and throw the football, I think that's going to cause issues for Carolina. And the other thing I think that's been a, a pleasant surprise for me is is the, the Arizona defense. The Arizona defense is good. It really is. They're better, they're better than I gave them credit for going in the year. They're a little bit bigger, better pass rushers than I expected secondary I know they got no Buda Baker that stinks that he's going to be banged up because he's really one of their best players but they don't give away easy completions Carolina wants to throw the ball short and do that kind of stuff and I just don't think that's going to fly with Arizona let alone I don't think they're ready for Kyler Murray and what they bring to the table too I'm going to go the Cardinals win this 28 to 17 I, I think they'll handle they'll handle this and the, and the fact there is no McCaffrey and I don't know if Carolina can really run the ball like like realistically where I go, oh, yeah, they're a real running dominant force that way. I like Arizona to back, back, uh, you know, bounce back and win this football game. All right, next one. This one's, to me, we talked about it earlier today, one of the best matchups of the whole day, not getting talked about. Indianapolis Colts at Chicago. Colts favored by two and a half. It's Frank Reich, Chuck Pagano. We got that going on. Nick Foles and the Bears. He played under Frank Reich in Philadelphia. Some cool storylines here, definitely, and two teams that are on the rise. To me, I look at this a little bit of like a, a, a coin flip type football game, Mike. I really do. I mean, this Bears defense is very good. But this Colts offense is really damn good, too, and they can do it all. They got scheme. They can run. They can throw the ball any which way they want. And I have a hard time thinking the Bears' front can mess this game up against the great blue wall. I mean, the wall is just it's, – it's built better than some other walls that are out there, I've been told, okay? So because of that, you know, I look at that and go, ooh, the Bears, their defense, they're so good that way. Uh, but that takes away their advantage of, of the talent the Colts have. And then the other side of the ball, hey, I think the Bears' offense will certainly be better. 
But this Colts defense has impressed me so far. I mean, we know the linebackers are real. The thing that's popped out to me is the defensive line in every game has been smothering, especially the last two. I mean, they've been dominant, and they send waves of guys at you. So with that, and the Bears' O-line not being that good, I'm going to go Colts. I think it's a fun game, but I'm going to go 24-20 Colts on the road. Wow, almost the exact same score prediction. I, I agree with everything you're saying. The Bears really shouldn't be 3-0. and uh, Nick Foles gives them an element that, that may be unpredictable, and we talked during PFT Live about the Frank Reich-Nick Foles reunion. Reich was the offensive coordinator in Philadelphia when Foles led them to a Super Bowl win and was the Super Bowl MVP. I've got the Colts, though, 23-20. And it's funny because I'm looking at the over-under because what I do, I don't pick my best bets ahead of time. I, I wait for my final gut feeling to lock in as we talk through the games yeah. and I get a sense of what I really like. And I saw 43 and I thought, man, they're going to score more than that. Then I look at my score, 23-20, 23 plus 20 is 43. Yeah. Well, the hell with that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, 23-20 I, uh, I think is going to be the score. Um, and and uh, I – I, the Colts are the better team right now, yeah. even though they have that loss. I think they're the better team. They should be 3-0. and They've looked good the last two weeks. They they splattered the Jets. They handled the Vikings. And I think they'll they'll go into Chicago, and they'll come out of there with a three-point win. Yep, yep. Uh, uh, so we, we kind of see that game the same way. Uh, and did I state my Arizona Panthers score? I said 28-17 just to make sure because I just saw that in the document. I wasn't sure. I just want to make sure. All right, here we go. New Orleans, Lions. Saints reeling, one and two, all the questions. They're favored by four. Detroit off the big win. Galladay's back. But this is going to be a Saints pissed off football team, Mike. What do you think? I'm, I know you're going to pick the Saints, but how much you got them winning by? I, I don't want to tip my hand about any of my best bets, but there are some ingredients here that would have me very concerned if I was a Lions fan. The Lions got their win for the month, right? Hey, we, 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 we're not embarrassments anymore. We can relax a little bit, turn down the heat a little bit. We got to win. We don't need another one for a few more weeks. And I know that no one's going to have that attitude deliberately, but at some level, you feel that weight go off your shoulders. You feel the urgency dissipate. And it's the Saints, and the Saints are pissed off, and the Saints are sick of hearing about all of the problems with their offense, with their defense, with Drew Brees. I'm surprised it's only a four-point spread, and that that's, for me, one of the key triggers. I see the spread, and if my first reaction is, man, only four? Well, okay, Saints, 31-17, and yeah, there's a good chance. They're one of the finalists, let's say, for the best bets this week for me because I, I don't think it's going to be – Number one, Alliance win, and number two, anything other than a seven-point victory by the Saints. Yeah, I, I mean, I hear a lot of what you're saying, I, I, and I, I thought the same thing really when I first looked at it. And and just I'm I'm throw my score out here. I I picked Saints thirty to twenty four, but I think there are some elements that scare me away from making it a best bet a little bit in this football game. And like I, I totally recognize that you could, you could be right. I mean, the Saints are the better team. We know that. I know just know me as Johnny football guy who's in the weeds sometimes too much, and maybe I analyze certain matchups more than I should. But the one thing I do look at is go, again, Detroit's going to play man-to-man. And the Saints, you know, even if Michael Thomas is back, I don't think he's going to be totally 100% and just flying by people. So the, the Lions will make the Saints. They're not going to give Drew Brees, like, his easy throws and throw it six yards and five yards over and over. I would be shocked. I would think they're going to go, no, Drew, you, you're going to have to throw this into tight coverage here. Sorry. It's man-to-man. We're doubling this guy. We locked it up that way. I think that scares me just a little bit. And then the other aspect that I think scares me a little is, like, I like the Saints' defense, but I think they are teetering on, we do too many defenses. We do too much. We're a little over-aggressive. You see how much they get penalized. They give you shots downfield. And with Galladay being back and Marvin Jones and Hawkinson and all that, I just see I could see De- Detroit making a number of big plays in this game against that defense. So I think the let me, Saints let me win. Just say, but go but ahead. I, but I, go ahead. Yeah, I'm done. I think the What's Saints your score? win. Thirty to twenty-four. Let me just say this real quick. Yeah. Ask yourself how different the line would be if the Lions had lost last week, or 
if Taysom Hill doesn't fumble yeah. and the Saints beat the Packers, that's it wouldn't be minus four. It would be minus seven, minus eight. That's I just point. feel like this line is influenced yeah. by the specific outcomes of last week's games. Yeah. I, I, listen, I, I hear you there. I do. I do. I guess there's just a little bit of a philosophical matchup that just scares me a little. Um, but I think those two points you made there are very real. You're right. That's, I didn't really think about that as I was evaluating it. All right, next one. Here we go. Stars galore, baby. Offensive shootout here. Browns, Cowboys. Cowboys favored by four and a half. I mean, this could be fun. It really could. I mean, we got stars OBJ, Landry, CD Lamb, Cooper, Cedric Wilson, Zeke, Chubb. Holy crap, Ola Batman, Miles Garrett on defense, all of that. I don't know if I imagine much defense really being played in this game, but Mike, lead us off. What do you think goes down here? Yeah, look, the Cowboys should be 2 and 1, could be 3 and 0. Oh. That their offense is is moving the ball well through the air in large part because as you pointed out, the offensive line isn't dominant like it used to be to allow Ezekiel Elliott to be the straw that stirs the drink, as Stephen Jones described him a year and a half ago. But I think they will be able to move the ball against the Browns' defense from a passing standpoint. The question becomes, what will the Browns do? Will yeah, they embrace right. a shootout? Will they try to slow it down? Will they grind it out? Will, will, will OBJ step up in that moment on the big stage? Even though it's not a nationally televised game, it's the Cowboys, right? Will he be frustrated if he's not getting the ball because it's the Cowboys, a team that he played twice a year, the team against which he had the most famous catch of his career? I just think the Cowboys ultimately are going to overpower them. I see this four-and-a-half-point spread. I like the Cowboys 34-24. Maybe it could be 34-27. Either way, I like the Cowboys by at least that four-and-a-half-point margin, and they get to two-and-two, two, more reflective of their talent, and the Browns fall to two-and-two, two, more reflective of their talent. Yeah, I, I, like I got to see the Browns win a game like this first before I can pick them. Just, you know, bottom line, the Browns are one of those teams that kind of like beat the teams they're supposed to, but the teams they're even with are a little bit better. They never seem to come out on top. Never. And that's what I worry about with them. And I don't necessarily think their passing offense looked that great last week. I don't. It was a little scary. I did not think Baker Mayfield was necessarily all that impressive either. So, I'm interested, like you said, to see where this goes. I do think the Browns' defense needs to be a little wary of just this Cowboys offense, who's going to make plays. I don't think Miles Garrett's going to be able to just take over the game and do anything like that. I mean, I'm sure he'll have his plays, but I really worry about the Browns on the back end who are still learning a new defense, and now they got legitimately four awesome receivers coming at them and a good running back and everything like that. And I just don't know. Now, I do think, like what you said, the Browns' best chance is, I think, to run the football. Uh, but but the Cowboys aren't that impressive in the secondary either. So, yeah, I, I don't know if they're going to look at this and go, hey, the hell with it, let's get in the shootout, or, hey, let's protect our defense. We think we can run with Nick Chubb and do that. Either way, I'm going with the Cowboys, 30-24. to 24. Uh, I think we'll have a lot of fun plays in this game. I just think the Cowboys are a little bit better, te better battle-tested than the Browns football team. We haven't disagreed on a game yet. No, I haven't. I know. I know. It's unbelievable. Right. Uh, we'll see where see this goes. See if it goes. continues. Yep. All right. Next one. Oh, Jaguars, Bengals. Nobody gets the blood boiling like this one. All right. Jaguars, Bengals uh, in Cincinnati. Bengals favored by three, which was a little surprising to me. There's no way I'm betting on this game regardless. There's no way. I wouldn't put three pennies down on this one. Over, under at 43. Mike, go ahead. Lead it off. I think this one is fairly simple. Number one, the Jaguars have a very potent weapon in James Robinson, the undrafted running back out of Illinois State. He was great last week, even though the rest of the team wasn't. And one of the reasons why the rest of the team wasn't, especially offensively, was Gardner Minshew had no time. He had no time. The Dolphins' pass rush should have gotten more credit in the aftermath of that game. It was all Fitzmagic, Fitzmagic, Fitzmagic. Yeah, well, right. The defense kept Gardner Minshew from ever getting comfortable. And here comes the Bengals' defense. Now, Geno Atkins practiced for the first time in a long time. But can that defense make him as uncomfortable as the Dolphins made him? And I don't think so. So, for me, this is one of those where, you know, the narrative flips again on the Jaguars. We go into the season, they stink. Oh, they beat the Colts. Then we start thinking they're pretty good. Well, they almost beat the Titans, and then they get embarrassed by the Dolphins. And, and I think that, that we are overlooking the fact that the Jaguars aren't 
as bad as we thought they were going to be. I was surprised to see the Bengals favored by three. I think the Jaguars win this one straight up. I got 30-24 to 24 Jaguars. I think they will move the ball. It should be a fun game to watch. Yeah. Joe Burrow, uh, you know, as long as they can keep him from getting his his block knocked off. What were you going to say there? It almost what were you going to say there? You didn't sound like you were going to say his, block. I, I was going to say, no, I almost, I was going to say, his knock blocked off. Oh, okay. Instead good. of his block uh, knocked off. I'm not sure I'm going to buy that. It sounded like there was another no, nut, like a uh, his No, I wasn't going to say, what, was he going to get his nuts knocked off? Well, no. how you said it. His, there you go. I, I'm sorry. You can bleep it if you have to. I, I, I meant to, because the phrase is knock your block off. Yes. So I'm, I mean, get block your, your block knock knocked off. off. Yeah. Block your knock <laughs> block off. That's, your knock I almost off. said knock your block off. All right. Um, <laughs> block your knock off. All okay. Right. So anyway, Jaguars 30. Bengals, with or without Joe Burrow getting his knock blocked off, 30-24. Yeah, I, I, see, I see it similar. I do. Yeah, you know, and I think I agree with what you said about the Jags. I think the Jags a little bit got caught in a spot last week to where, you know, also, oh, we're one and one, and we played close with the AFC championship team and the Tennessee Titans and almost won. You know, we'll have no problem here against the Dolphins. And the Dolphins came in going, we're 0-2, and we're pissed off, and we need to win this freaking game because we don't want to go 0-3. And that's where there was a little bit of a clash as well, let alone you, you're very right. That Dolphins D-line was a handful last week for Jacksonville. I don't think Cincinnati's D-line is good enough to do that. Geno Atkins could change those type of things. But still, I just look at the Jaguars as being a better football team. I do. I think both teams will move the ball. Joe Burrow, that Bengals off that short passing offense, fits against that Jaguars defense that if you can beat it at all, it is the short passing game all the time. Uh, I'm going 30 to 24 or 30 to 27 Jags winning on the road. All right, let's go to the next one. Chargers versus Tampa Bay. Good old Tom Brady hosting the Chargers. Tampa Bay favored by seven. Um, quarterback, have we heard any news with the Chargers as of late where Tyrod is that I missed maybe this morning or something? Because I don't think there's anything new as of right now, is there? I'll check the injury report while we discuss it, but I haven't seen anything lately, although with all the Titans stuff and all the other news this week, it may have gotten overlooked. And the bottom line is, you know, for as good as Justin Herbert looked week one, I mean, it just didn't work for the Chargers in the second week of the Herbert experiment, and it makes me very concerned about this one. Yeah. You know, if they if they had won last week, I, I would have been tempted to consider maybe even an upset, not just covering by the uh, – the, the Chargers, I'm looking at it now. Tyrod Taylor did not practice on Wednesday because of that ribs slash chest injury. He's just a week and a half removed from the complications that he suffered when uh, he had an encounter with uh, a needle that uh, punctured his lung. So, look, I'm going to say the Buccaneers win this one 27-13. This is just a gut feel. The Chargers haven't looked as good as we thought they'd be, and the Buccaneers are starting to round into form, Chris. Yeah, I, I, I kind of look at it the same way. You know, and it is a rookie quarterback, and there's been some yards thrown for, but getting the ball in the end zone is a different story. That's where, you know, there's a learning curve. And, I, you know, the Chargers, again, they're not one of those teams. They can run the ball a little bit, but they can't just line up and blow you away. And they're not going to do it this week against these five freaks on the defensive line. I mean, they, they, Tampa's D's looks good. Their D line can overwhelm teams so far from what I've seen in the first three weeks. They can run teams over at times. That's where I just look at it and go, I don't think the Chargers can win this football game. I think the Chargers could be a pain in the butt for Brady in that offense for a little while, but I, I see it a lot like you. I'm going Bucks 24-16. Kind of an ugly, like, yeah, we're the better team, but damn, this team's hanging around like a gnat and annoying type of game. That's how I kind of see it. All right, here we go. It's Vikings time, baby. They didn't get to practice yesterday. That stinks, but they got the Houston Texans going to Houston. Both teams are winless. Texans favored by four and a half, over under 54 and a half. I know you didn't do enough drugs this week to pick the Vikings, so how many points are the Texans going to win? <laughs> <laughs> well, that implies I did any this I week. But I, I, look, both teams are desperate. Both are 0-3. The Texans had a... a Horrible schedule to start the season with the Chiefs and the Ravens and the Steelers. I, I like the Texans. This is a who, – who knows whether they cover or not. I like the Texans 34-27. It won't surprise me if they, they do what the Titans did last week and win the game but still don't cover against the Vikings. Yeah, I, I just – I can't pick the Vikings. I do think there can be a lot of offense in this game. I do. You know, the Texans' defense, not good. They can't stop the run. 
that's going to make them have to do things to, like with their pass defense because Dalvin Cook, I think, will have a number of big runs in the game. And that, even though the passing offense for the Vikings is very simple, it's going to lead to some easy throws. But the Vikings defense is worrisome too, as we've seen. And Deshaun Watson, right, with a not so great pass rush in ten. I mean, with a Minnesota, I just think this is the type of game that he's going to make some plays and they kind of get this offense jump started and they're going to be so happy it's the Vikings and not one of the three teams that you mentioned already that they start the year off. Texans 34-28. Uh, I, the, the game could go – I think the Texans wins all the way. I wouldn't be shocked if it was 20-17 to or if it was like 45-38 at the end of the day. So now we go to commercial break and you got to take this. This is your part. I don't know how to do this. All right, yeah, this is very difficult and very complicated. It's like diffusing a bomb. We'll be back with the 4 o'clock games when PFTPM and Chris Sims on Button continue right now. The red one or the green one? All right, get your peacock on. You know it, NBC Sports on Peacock is streaming now. It's big time. I mean, me and Florio lead it off every morning at 7 a.m. You got Dan Patrick, Rich Eisen, brother from another mother, which is becoming one of my favorite shows with the Michaels, okay? And I'm a regular on there now at 4 o'clock Eastern, so I'm kind of a big deal. And then you got PFTPM at 5 o'clock every day. So, man, you're big time. You got two shows on Peacock. I'm Did trying you just to be break like some you. news? Did what? you break some news? What's that? You said you're on PFT Live every day. Are you now on Fridays? Oh, nope, nope, I'm not. New? Sorry, I got to clarify. Let me wipe that off of my contract. I don't do Fridays. <laughs> the hell with that. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, let's get into the 4 o'clock games. We don't need a lot of time on this one. All right, this is one I think we know who's going to win. Giants at Rams in L.A. Rams favored by 13, over under at 48. Do the Rams cover or not, Mike? I, you know, I think they do. I think the Rams are going to be pissed about what happened last week. Sean McVay's probably let them hear it all week long. I'm not going to pick an embarrassing score for the Giants, although it could get embarrassing. 27-13, that's 14. That's one more than 13. So I think the Rams do cover. The Giants haven't been horrible, but, boy, they looked horrible against the 49ers. Cross the country. I, I just I, I, I just don't see it happening for the Giants in L.A., and I think the Rams are going to take out some of their frustrations from last week on the Giants. Yeah, uh, agreed. I, I guess the only thing that scares me just a little is the Giants have a big front four on defense to where maybe they could slow down the, the run game, but I don't think so. I think schematically McVay will screw them up, which he does to just about everybody. The Rams, they're a 3-0 football team. I mean, they, they win last week if there's any other quarterback other than Josh Allen playing. I mean, that's really all there is to say. I mean, other than Russell Wilson and Mahomes, they win that game. They really do. Josh Allen made some plays at the end of the game that only those other two guys can make on a field. Uh, he, he's phenomenal that way. So I really like what I see from this Rams team. I really do. McVay's got the mojo back. They're moving people off the ball in the run game. Jared Goff is playing as good as I've ever seen him play in his career. He's getting a lot of easy completions. There's no doubt. But when they do drop back and he needs to make or thread the needle, man, he's been threading it. I mean, it's I, I'm very impressed. You know, now he leads the league right now in yards per, per completion and yards per attempt. But I would like to hear what his yards, you know, a, a intended air yards is. I bet you they're very low. But I'm going Rams 31-14, and I think I might be low. I really do. I wanted to go like 38-14, 38-13, something like that. I don't see how it happens, and I'm worried about Daniel Jones' health and the offense of the Giants altogether, so Rams all the way. All right. Buffalo versus Las Vegas. Um, the Bills favored by your, three. What? Your boy Blue versus your boy Gru. Yeah, Blue versus Gru. I like that. I really like that. That's a good one. Yep, my boy Blue, Josh Allen on fire. Vegas off the loss to the Patriots, hung around. They made they self-inflicted mistakes that really hurt them and ended up ultimately, you know, making that game out of reach. But go ahead, Mike, lead this one off. This is an interesting matchup. Yeah, this one is interesting, but you know, the Bills are just better. The Raiders had their chance last week to win people over. They went into New England and it didn't work. Now they're going back to a place where they won their game against the Saints. But, you know, the Bills are better than the Saints right now. The Bills look unstoppable when they can avoid the self-inflicted wounds. Yeah. And Josh Allen, when I talked to him last week, he was so pissed off after that game 
that I think he's going to be refocused, he's going to be recommitted, and I think the Raiders have to be at some level reeling a little bit from this thing that happened Monday night. Right. I, I know there's a there's a way the dominoes fall that they turn it into something that they're mad at the world because how dare anyone criticize them for what they did? They know in their hearts what they did was stupid. It's raised questions. And how do you get over that in one week? I don't think you do when you got a great team coming to town. I got Bills 30, Raiders 20. Yeah. Um, the, I mean, the, the Bills, like you said, they've been playing great. Uh, I, I, where I worry about it for the Raiders is this aspect. The Raiders don't have a good pass rush. They like to crowd the line of scrimmage. They got pretty good corners, so they trust them. But now, you know, Damon Arnett, their first-round pick, he's hurt. He's not going to be in there. But they're always playing a defense to try to help their front seven because even when they have eight guys in the box, as you saw last week, the Patriots run for like 200 yards in them, and it didn't matter. It didn't matter if they put the whole damn team in the box. They couldn't stop the Patriots. So that's scary. And not that the Bills are a great running team, but you still have to worry about the running game because Singletary's good, they have a pretty good O-line, and they got a few Josh Allen run wrinkles every game that will scare the crap out of a defensive coordinator. So, therefore, they're going to play man-to-man -man against this group? Night-night. Sorry. Negative Ghost Rider. That pattern's full. You don't want to play man-to-man -man against this quarterback and this team and Brian Dayball call him plays. They don't go for three-yard completions. They go for 30-yard completions almost every throw. It's always drop back and try to kill you. The only way I see the Raiders staying in this game is they dominate with their own run game and keep Josh Allen and company off the field and Derek Carr's real smart with high percentage passes and they kind of do that. But I think McDermott and looking at the Raiders wide receivers being a little banged up and all those things and the fact that Derek Carr isn't aggressive and the Bills don't give you chances downfield like that, I, I think they'll have a good game plan. I'm going Bills 35-24. I am. I, I just and you're right about the running game, though, yeah. because we saw the Bills get gashed last week by the Rams. Right. So Josh Jacobs could do it to the Bills on Sunday. Definitely. It scares me. And, and you know, also because it was McVay, you know, Gruden will look at it and he'll know exactly what McVay was doing and why and everything like that to where, yeah, if McDermott doesn't adjust, he could be in trouble. This Raiders O-line is good. And that's the only way I see them losing if they just totally get dominated that way. But I think they got to know that and their offense is too special. So I'm with you. I'm going with that. All right, let's go to the other doozy. This is a doozy right here. Patriots, Chiefs, New England at the Chiefs. Kansas City favored by seven, over under at 53. I'm very excited for this. You want me to lead it off or you want to lead it off? Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm curious what you think. Yeah. I may change my pick based on what you said. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, of course, I'm excited about seeing the Patriots defense versus the Chiefs offense. But I do think this is a year where the Chiefs do have the advantage. You know, I, I, I do look at it this way. The Chiefs have the added element of Clyde Edwards-Alaire and the run game and some of those short screens and things like that. The Patriots front seven is uh, like we've talked about before. It's nothing to write home about. And I know they're going to play some man-to-man -man and do stuff like that. I think it would be a great matchup. I'm certainly looking forward to it. But I just, with Kansas City and that style of defense, they're going to make, they're going to make plays. Uh, I don't care how good that secondary is. The other side of the ball, we talked about this on the show today. You know, New England's offense, it's hard to prepare for. They can do it all. We know they don't have great wide receivers. Kansas City got to play against Baltimore last week, which runs basically a, a similar system now with Cam Newton and the Patriots as the Ravens and Lamar Jackson with all the creative run game stuff and do that. I got to think Spagnuolo is going to look at that and go, I'm not going to die a slow death and let them run the ball down my throat like they did to the Raiders last week. And also, we've talked about you don't ever want to die a slow death if you're the Chiefs because the best player on your team are on the offensive side of the ball and the quarterback and all that. So uh, I, I think it could be a lot of big plays. I do think they're going to force Cam Newton to throw the ball to win the football game. And I'm going to take the Chiefs 30-21. to 21. But I think it's, you know, it's one of those where it's like 24-21 and the Chiefs put a late touchdown together to finally put the game away or something like that. See, I look at it differently. I look at it. Now, we agree on everything except the way it goes down at the end. Okay. I see this a lot like the week two game between the Seahawks and the Patriots where the Chiefs pull ahead and the Patriots make a furious attempt to try to take it late. I've got Chiefs 31-27 with it being 31-20 with five minutes left, gotcha. they yeah. drive down yeah. and score, and then they can't get the next score, whether they don't get the ball back or whether they fail to get it in uh, to take the lead. But but I, I think this is going to be 
a closer game than the spread would suggest, but just because of how I'm envisioning the circumstances at the end of the game where Cam Newton and company will move the ball, will get a touchdown, will make it a little closer, and then run out of time. Yeah, to me this would be a scary bet because of all the scenarios we just talked about. It could be one of those games where the Chiefs are winning by 20 points, and like you said, and then it's the Patriots' late rally, and they win by four or five points all of a sudden. You know, there's just too many variables there to where, I, I don't know, That's it scares me, at least as far as that's concerned. I will not be picking that game for my best bet. Um, all right, let's go. Primetime games, our game, Sunday night football. We need to take a break. Do we need to take a break? Oh, we, we do. That's break. right. Keep me on there. Let's That's go. Right. Take a break. Let's yeah. go. Do it. Let's take a break. When we return, the primetime games, plus our best bets for week four. More PFTPM slash Chris Hitler. All right, we're back, baby. Chris Sims Unbutton PFTPM collaboration. It's the Mega Picks podcast. All right, we're on to our primetime best bets. I just want to remind everybody our odds, our odds are provided by PointsBet Sportsbook, the new official sports betting partner of NBC Sports. Uh, pretty cool that the world has gone that way. Florio and I are on fire. I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully somebody's making money off of us out there. And no, it's not me because I'm too much of a wimp to actually bet. So here we go. Let's go to the Eagles and the 49ers. Eagles reeling. Everybody's questioning everything with the Eagles. You mentioned it this morning. There seems like there's more pressure on the Philadelphia Eagles than any other team in football, and I agree with you. It's weird. 49ers banged up, still 2-1, and one, looked good last week. Lead it off, Mike. 49ers favored by 7, over under at 46. One thing you got Kyle does is he he wins the games he's supposed to win. He yeah. overpowers teams he's supposed to beat, and this is a team that he should overpower. It may take a while. It may not happen right out of the gates, but I think the 49ers, regardless of who's on the field, they know the system. They run the system. Next man up. They're working it to perfection, proving yet again he is a young Bill Belichick. All he needs to do is show up in a ratty old sweatshirt at a press conference to <laughs> fully cement the look. He won't do look. that. <laughs> 27 to 17 is the score that I'm picking. I, I, I like the 49ers to keep winning. And, you know, the way they got humbled in week one and the way they got ravaged by injuries, it makes them kind of a sympathetic team and a team that people right? want to see succeed and want to see thrive. They lost that luster of front runner quickly. And now it's like, can they hold it together? What yeah. can they do? And it, it's a good story. And the Eagles, on the other hand, like you said, they're, they're, they're just under too much pressure. They're trying to do too much. Carson Wentz is trying to score 30, 30 points with every throw of the football, and I don't see that ending in prime time. I think it's just even more pressure on this team. I like the 49ers. Yeah, I, I do too, and, you know, I, I think you hit it. I mean, first off, I just don't see how the Eagles are going to move the ball consistently all night. He is going to be under pressure passing the football. They don't ever really have to blitz the 49ers. That means seven guys are back there. He has he's he's too aggressive as we talked about when the pocket does collapse like you said you're exactly you're trying to a 30 point ball or you know win the game on the last play of the game it's every play it's a little like the old Deshaun Watson we talked about it's just too scary against this defense that's still fast and flies around and is totally aggressive you know I, I think that the Eagles will yeah hang in there I do I think the Eagles defense is pretty good and of course they are desperate I mean I don't think there's any way the 49ers lose this game unless Nick Mullins just does stupid stuff, which he threw a dumb pick against the Jets, and he was close to throwing two dumb picks last week against the Giants, but, man, he also made a lot of really good throws and good decisions that way too. And, you know, I, I, I yeah, I'm going 49ers, 27-21. I got nothing more to say that. But, yes, I, I like San Francisco, and I think you're right. It, it's made people actually respect them and like them more that they're not the front runners, and yet they still look fun to watch and everything with all these injuries and being banged up. All right. Oh, Aaron Rodgers, you're on fire. I mean, he is on fire. Aaron Jones is on fire, too. Atlanta is the opposite of fire. They are in Antarctica frozen to death, all right? They're in deep crap. Packers favored by seven Monday night football over under at 56 and a half. Mike, go ahead. Yeah. You know, I like the Packers in this one. The question just is how many points will be scored by 
the home team. And and look, the Falcons, uh, they know how to score points. They yeah. know how to move the football. And the right. Packers' defense hasn't been stifling. They gave up 30 points last week to the New Orleans Saints in a game that was back and forth until we got down close to the wire. And or not relatively close to the wire, but that Taysom Hill fumble t- changed everything. I've got the Packers in this one 40 to 24. Uh, I think they easily cover, easily cover. And, uh, you know, it, it, it probably should be a game that, that the Packers, even if they fall behind a little bit early, if they've shown they can come back and the Falcons have shown they can blow a lead. So I like the Packers in this one. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the, the Packers are just a different team this year. They don't even panic when they're down anymore because they know they're going to make big plays. I mean, the Packers have really become like a really big play thriving offense. That's kind of what's made, a diff- made them a better, different team, in my opinion. And... You know, uh, agreed with you. We don't know where Julio Jones is going to be for this game yet. I, I mean, that would, like, you know, change maybe how close I think it is or things like that. I do think Atlanta will move the ball on the Green Bay defense. You know, Green Bay, they, they just, they're going to take some chances and do some different things. And there's talent on that Falcons offense. But ultimately, the Falcons defense stinks, as we've talked about. And... The Packers, with their ability to run the ball, throw the ball, pass protect, when you don't have a great pass rush against, oh, number 12, he will buy time if you do a great job covering him. This is when he becomes unstoppable, let alone they don't have good cover guys either, and we'll see where we are with DeMonte Adams. Hopefully he's back. But uh, I'm taking the Packers in a 38-30 game. I kind of see it like you do, though. I think it's going to be like, you know, 38-24, 38-21, something like that with a late touchdown by the Falcons. But you clearly think the Packers were the better team in the field and it wasn't even close. By the way, we agree on every game straight up. We only disagree on two things against the spread. I've got New England covering, and you've got uh, Philadelphia covering as underdogs. Holy cow, that's crazy. All right, well, I think we'll be different on our – I think we'll be different on our best bets here. So this is where we're going to get into it. You want to lead off your first bet, first best bet, or you want me I'll to? I'll lead it? off. No, I'll do it. And this is the only one that I that I gave any sort of a hint about because I really this is a hard week to find three that that just get that that yeah you know that gut feeling that that this is a bad spread or a bad over under and we should go one way or the other. I'm taking the Saints minus four against the Lions. I think it's going to be ugly. I think the Saints are out to kick ass and take names and I think the Lions at a certain level are feeling like hey you know we got our win for the month we're, we're good for now yeah uh I, I I hear you I don't have the guts to go there I started because I feel like you're that way but I don't know there's just something about the Saints right now that scare me a little bit I'm gonna go with the Ravens I am that's gonna be the first one I go with uh again I know Washington's defense is good and be a pain in the butt I have no faith in Washington's offense at all this Ravens team I think is gonna be pissed off I could see it being close and kind of ugly for a while, but eventually I think the defense will cause turnovers, make plays that way, and the dam will break on Washington. So I'm going Ravens there 24-9, to and I really think it could be one of those like 31-9 to type games or something like that. All right. Bet- it's one of my finalists. It's one of my finalists, okay. but I didn't have the guts to do it because I'm not sure the Ravens are going to rebound from what happened to him on Monday night. Next one for me, speaking of Monday night, Oh, Aaron Rodgers, he delivered for me last week, plus three against the Saints. He's going to deliver for me this week, minus seven against a Falcons team that they should win that game by 17, if not more. So give me the Packers. Yeah, I, it's, it's, this is funny because this is another one I starred, but I think I'm just chicken a little. I, I guess I'm just chicken of the Packers defense, just letting up a I'm few. I'm a bigger Aaron Rodgers fan right now. Than you <laughs> it seems like it lately. Uh, it's very funny. Uh, and it's not about back Aaron Rodgers, their offense. It's just, I, I worry about the defense, I guess, with, with the desperate, desperate Falcons football team. All right. My next one, I'm going to LA, baby. I'm going to LA. That's right. The Rams, the Giants. I just, the, I'm riding the points. You're taking on, two games, giving 13, I am. two of them. Sometimes you just got to ride the wave and not be scared of a little number that's in double digits. Nope. There, I just don't see how it happens. Rams defense playing good, offense hitting on cylinders. The Giants stink. So that's all there is to say. I go Rams 31-14, and I think I'm being kind with that right there. Yeah, you know, I thought about both of those games, and, and I also had the Colts down as a potential best bet because they're only given two and a half, and I feel like they're going to win that game. And I'm checking one thing here before I give you my final pick, and I've just checked it. It's the weather forecast for Green Bay, Wisconsin, and I'm going to do something that I've never done in the time that we've done this. I'm taking two bets 
from the same game. Wow. And it's going to be sunny, not when they play the game, but it's clear, Yeah. it's dry, it's fast track, it's over 56 and a half points wow. Monday night. Packers Falcons. So I got the Packers given seven oh. cover, and I got the two teams combining to score more than 56. And oh, a half come on. Boom. Come on, Packers. Win 27 23 for your buddy Chris <laughs> Sims, please. <laughs> that would be amazing. That would be amazing. I'm torn here with my third pick. I really am. And, and full transparency, I'm between the Bills and the Cardinals. Those are two games I look at to where. I just go, man, you know, I, and I just don't know where I want to go with this one. I think, though, ultimately, I'm going to go with the Cardinals. I am. I'm going to go with the Cardinals to cover the spread against the, the uh, Carolina Panthers. I think the big thing to me is Cardinals defense pretty good, and I don't think this Panther offense is ready for Kyler Murray, the spread out show, DeAndre Hopkins, and all the things they got for them there. So, I'm gonna. I, three points was too low to me. I went Cardinals twenty eight seventeen, and uh, I'm gonna go with it. Or a would week you, after, a week after you made the Lions I know. against the Cardinals one of your best bets. Just, You're taking the Cardinals as a best bet against the Panthers. Just going with a matchup that I like. Just going matchups. I mean, what would you have done? Would you have gone the Bills over the Raiders or the Cardinals over the Panthers? I would have gone. The, I would have gone the Bills. Yeah, the Bills were, were one of the ones that I that I had. Uh, uh, you know, I I I, I'm, I come up with the finalists as we're doing the show. And then I have to whittle it down. This week, I don't have three that I feel strongly about. And I want to stay away from over-under because of what happened week one with the Texans and the Chiefs where yeah. we got screwed. But but that's all I got. That's yeah. the only thing I feel strongly about. Uh, so come on, Packers, and come on, Falcons. Let's score a lot of points. But Packers, let's win by more than seven. <laughs> okay. All right. It's a good podcast. A lot of agreeing, but we got some disagreements on our best bets. I can make, I can make a comeback this week is what they're telling me. All right. You the man, Mike. Had a fun day. Enjoy your right. work day tomorrow on Friday. I don't work on Fridays, Thanks. but that's it for PFT. Yeah, Friday. Friday. I'll see you Friday. Collaboration. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.